Welcome to AI TV. We're broadcasting live from AI Expo Africa 2019, Africa's largest AI trade show. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome Amira Abbas from, uh, well, your Quantum Research Group, UKZN, and you're a consultant researcher. That only just about fits on the badge here. So. I know, it's a, it's a big, big word. But you're into me. quantum computing, basically, which is the future. So let's learn about that. I'm sure our listeners and viewers would like yeah, to learn more about that. Yeah. What, what do you do? So I, yeah, so I am, um, my research focus is on actually the intersection of, of machine learning and quantum computing. So it's very buzzwordy, but it's quantum machine learning. And the whole idea is just trying to build artificial intelligence algorithms that use these these different physical devices, these quantum computers. Right. Now, I've seen a slide with a quantum computer in it, and they don't look anything like computers that we know right now, right? So yeah. this is taking us to the next level of processing power. And uh, I guess IBM is one of the one of the companies driving this globally. Are, are, there, are there any other companies driving quantum computer? Yeah, yeah. So there is actually so there's a new startup every day. I can't even keep up with the environment. It's very fast paced. I'm trying to build the first fully fledged quantum computer. So you've got your typical, you know, your Googles, IBMs. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few other companies, Rigetti, Xanadu, in Canada and all around the world. Um, but I think what's interesting is that. Everybody's trying a different architecture of this quantum computer. We don't really know what the big one is going to look like. So is, there's this rush, and it's very exciting as a researcher in the space, but also as like a startup, um, mm. as an entrepreneur, as an investor. So yeah, it's, it's interesting times, and we don't know what it's going to look like, but at least a lot of people are trying different ways. So, it, I mean, just to cut, confirm for people who are new to this part of our space, the world that we're in, it, it, is, is quantum computer, are they working now? Can, can yeah. you say, I need you to switch on the quantum yeah. computer? It, yeah. that, are they working? So, so I like to think back to um, pictures of our first computers, yeah. like in the 30s and the 40s, right? So these computers... So like Aaron looked, Turing, the bomb, the yeah, big right, bomb machine. Yeah, they took up the whole yeah. room and yeah. uh, they looked very impressive, but what they could do was very small. So we are kind of like in that phase now with quantum computing where we have these big... Com computers that take up the whole room, but what they can do is unfortunately not much. So we have working quantum computers. IBM is, is, is I would say, one of the leaders in this space, and they have machines that, um, so the ones that we're allowed to use have 20 qubits, for example, and this dictates how much information it can store and, and what it can do. So a qubit is an analogous version of a bit of information okay. that would be on a computer, on a normal computer. So you can imagine 20 bits is not that much, right? So how much you can encode in that is, it's very limited. So we're working on very small scales with quantum computing right now, but it's growing very quickly and we're seeing a lot of investment into this industry and we're seeing a lot of partnerships with academia, with academics and, and industry players. And this is what is so fantastic about it. So in layman's terms, how does a quantum computer work and yeah. what is it going to unlock for us in com terms of computing power? Yeah. So just those two things. What, okay. How does it work and then yeah. how much faster will it be? Yeah, so, so, okay. so how it works simply is you can imagine, so in a normal computer you've got a chip and on this chip there's, there's bits that can be manipulated, right? Ones and zeros. And now in a quantum computer, you have exactly the same idea where you've got chips and you can encode things into ones and zeros. But this chip is governed by different laws of physics. It's governed by quantum mechanics. And so now not only can you encode things in ones and zeros, but you also have this additional thing called superposition, which is basically you can think of it as something between zero and one. So it can be 0 0.5, 0 0.88. You know the the and it can also be negative. So now you have a lot more space in which you can encode quantum bits of information. So this is what what makes a quantum computer quite different. And also now these these qubits, these quantum bits, can start to do weird things and interfere with each other. And this is what we call like quantum entanglement. So these properties are what makes it different. And the hope is that these quantum computers can search a different space mathematically and computationally so that we can answer questions that we can't answer on our, on our normal computers, like studying very complicated molecules and material science yeah. and medicine and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah. and, then, and then, I mean, ultimately, the, the, the processing speed and, and, and the power it, that comes with that, I mean, if you were to benchmark it with... Let's say we had a quantum computer of X and a traditional yeah. computer of 
why um, how much faster yeah. what, what, uh, is there is there a way of uh, am I even probably asking the this wrong question the, no, <coughs> at the no moment. you're asking you're asking a very very good question and the answer is that it depends. So this is, right. this is very problem specific. It's going to be one of those interviews, right? <laughs> yeah. um, it's difficult to say because we know for a fact that quantum computers are very good at problems like factoring large numbers, which a classical computer can't do at the moment. But this doesn't stop somebody very smart from writing an algorithm that runs on a, cl on a classical computer that kicks quantum's butt, you know? So there's this constant race between um, quantum algorithms and classical algorithms. And so there are speed ups that we can get on our algorithms for certain examples but um, whether a quantum computer is actually tangibly better at something that's useful we don't know yet and okay. this is why it's exciting yeah. so I mean Mira you're a lady uh, working <laughs> I th on I think so yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you're a woman in tech right and yeah. that's obviously something we're striving to always uh, improve on and make sure we have a, a diverse community um, within our show sure. but I mean you've just really spent the last four, five to ten minutes talking about really the cutting edge right so but for a, a young student who's starting out on their the learning curve uh, ultimately to get to someone of your caliber what what kind of journey have you been on and how how did you start your your journey just to, just to give some inspiration maybe to to people who are watching yeah absolutely so um, yeah so I I had a typical career path, I think. So I, I studied, you know, um, a good a good degree in finance, and then I did the next thing you do: you get a job, right? And you work in the financial industry, and you you move up up a ladder in, in the corporate space. But for some, and even though I was I was relatively so, you, so you left left education into the world of work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I went to work for a bit, and um, and it was it was good. It was very interesting. Um, I was relatively successful in my career, but for some reason I was still unhappy, and I didn't know why. And so I tried to teach myself a lot of things in my extra time because we live in a time now where so many like great resources are available for free, right? And one evening I was watching a lecture on. Um, on how to model stocks on a stock exchange. And the lecturer, he was a, a physicist. And when he spoke about physics, it was like I, um, a light had switched on in my head and I immediately knew why I was unhappy. It was because I wasn't pursuing, um, I wasn't pursuing physics and this was actually what, what interested me. So my advice to, to people who, um, who are still searching for what they're passionate about is to don't stop. So don't stop furthering yourself. Don't stop looking for for, for what it is that excites you and interests you. And once you find it, it becomes so clear mm. uh, the path you need to follow. That's interesting. I, mean, I, I left uh, work a month later. I wrote to every South African professor <laughs> in physics. So, and you, so I, you left uh, without even a place in um, any of these institutions? or So I was finishing up a, a board exam. I thought that would be good to complete. But I knew in my head that I was already gone you right. know, from, from yeah. industry. And... Um, and things just uh, fell into place, luckily, because there are so many opportunities out there for young South Africans, for young Africans to get into academia and, um, and to travel and to do all these cool things. I think academia is not uh, advertised well enough. And then also, if you want to partner with industries, this is also there. So yeah, it's, well, it's we're, we're really exactly advocating stuff that. Like this, yeah. right? And it's just, a, it's just follow your passion or firstly find your passion and then follow it. And and you'll be happy and this is, yep. this is something that's important. So that, that's really the yeah. ultimate career advice, isn't it, really? I think if you, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter what, what topic it, it is or what, what career yeah, you're in. Exactly, I mean, yeah. I think you, if you're not getting inspired and learning new things and, 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 or you're not happy, then, then it's never too late to, to change. I mean, I, I'm almost yeah. 50, right? And I, I got into this space three years ago yeah. and I've been in the software space before that, but um, I'm originally a chemist. Oh, so uh, I yeah, about yeah, you. yeah. There's hope for us all, right? <laughs> so, uh, Amira, it's it's great to have you here. No, uh, I mean, if 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 we just to wrap up, uh, uh, you know, what, you know, what does the future hold for the African AI community? Because I know you're you're involved with the, the deep learning in Darba, and that's yeah. a fantastic community. And we're obviously trying to build bridges between our communities. Yeah. You know, what do you think the future holds over the next sort of five years here in our part of the world? So I'll speak. Um, I'll speak from my 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 research and my perspective. So. Um, quantum computing in particular in Africa. So we just, um, all the universities signed this great partnership with IBM um, to get free access to their quantum computers. So this is, this is quite good. But for mm. once, 
we as Africans can be at the forefront of, of the next computational revolution, right? So we don't have to just be consumers of, of quantum computing, for example, when it comes about. And so we can do um, cutting edge research and have high caliber output and create something here in Africa that's competitive globally because we don't have to miss the boat because we're still in the, in the early development phase and we're looking at these amazing things. So I think over the next five years, we're going to see um, we're going to see a lot of, of innovation coming through with, with quantum computing and integrating them with, with African problems. And this for me is very, very exciting. So I think that I'm very, I'm very um, I wouldn't say I'm optimistic, I think I'm realistic in, yeah. in this view. And also I think we're going to see a lot more partnership with, with startups, with academics and, and indus large industry players. And I think this is going to be fantastic. So, Great. So yeah, well, to thanks for joining us on uh, AI TV. Me. Thank you for coming to the show thanks, and uh, talking and, and sharing sharing these great insights with us. So uh, thanks very much. We'll see you next year. Thank you.